Hey, hey, besties! It's Becky here with Bestie Becky's Crafts, and today is Thursday, May 31st, and that means it is a gorgeous day challenge collaboration. And today's theme was your choice, but you had to reuse recycled items or upcycle something. And I hadn't used, made an embellishment yet, so I needed to make an embellishment. And I went to the thrift store and was just kind of looking around trying to figure out what I was going to make. And I came across spoons. And these were just some old spoons. I don't know. They were oh, probably not even a quarter piece. I don't know. I bought four matching ones just to kind of play around with and see what I wanted to do with them. And I had seen people decorate them and then, you know, hang them this way, but I didn't really want to do that because, you know, that's not a new idea. And I wanted to do something kind of new, but also do something that I hadn't done before. So what I did was I took my spoon. I'm going to just set it to the side here, and I made, actually turn it this way because I made a wand, a wand with a spoon, isn't that cute, could put in a loaded envelope, give as a gift, oh, that was a sweet idea, and I've got my gorgeous girl in there, so, let me show you how I made it. Super easy. Super easy. Okay. So, we put our spoon to the side. And I have a piece of tissue paper here. Gift wrap paper. I keep getting packaging or you'd wrap a present in. Um, or stuff a gift bag with. And you, it's recycled. Got it from packaging that I already had. And I stamped my gorgeous girl on it with memento ink, and I used number 57, and she's called Little Heart. Isn't she sweet? So this is the gorgeous girl that I used, and I just stamped it on, and then I colored it with my colored pencils. And I wasn't sure if it would work on the tissue paper, but it did. So all I did was I colored like I did on paper, you know, colored her face, and actually I kind of colored it all and then blended, because it doesn't take much to blend. Alright, so like her little face, and her neck, and she's got her little arms over here. Alrighty. And then I used, that was, um, light peach, and then I used peach to go around her hairline, a little more shadow, and it's transparent, you can see the little dots from my cutting board behind there, so it kind of gives it a nice effect. And put it on the spoon and then I'm going to do some shading on her arms and then the next color I'm going to use is nectar just like I would on paper across the top and a little extra shadow okay and then for her blush I used blush pink now I went and had it colored her cheeks. Okay. And then I took my gamsol. But I'll know our gamsol here. And my blending stick. And just blended it. Like I said, it doesn't really take a whole lot because the tissue paper is pretty thin and you, you don't 
really need to blend it a whole lot anyway because we're going to glue it to our spoon. But we just want to just, just soften those edges a little bit. Our arms. Okay, so there's our cute little face. And then I did her hair, and I just used black for her hair and just followed the lines of her bangs. You know, gorgeous, gorgeous stamps make it so easy for you. And then this way, and I'm going to go ahead and color across the top. And then I'm just going to bring a few pieces up. And then also her curls at the bottom and next to her face. Like so. And then down from her bow. Come on over to the other side, around her face, the ends of her hair, and just kind of like so. And then again, take my Gamsol and my blending stomp. And the black, and you, this you can see it, how it blends really, really easy. on her hair because it's it's translucent but yet it can you can see where you made your lines I'm gonna go ahead and go across her bangs here and then I'm gonna feather up around the bow a little bit there. There we go. And there's her hair. Isn't that cute? Alright, and then for her hearts on her dress and her bow, I just used pink. And the bow on her hair I just kind of colored in pretty solid. And the heart on her dress. And then for the bow on her dress, I colored the center part. And then went around the outside edge of that bow part because I'm going to blend it. And then I went underneath. The bow where the tails are, that bow, just like so. And use my blending stick, my one pink on it. I'm just gonna blend out her bow a little bit just to make it smooth and a little heart. I know I could have colored the other ones, but I know that they won't show on the. Um, spoon because the spoon's only so big and I'm going to go ahead and blend out her bow like so there we go isn't that adorable? I just love that effect. I don't know. I'm going to have to try and figure out other ways to, to 
use them on tissue paper. But there she is, all colored. Isn't that neat? Okay. So now that she's all colored, I took my spoon and I took my Mod Podge and I sigh because I don't like the smell of Mod Podge. Does anybody like the smell? Of, oh, now I can't get open. Urgh. Anybody like the smell of it? I don't. But it does a good job what it's supposed to do. So I can't really complain too much. All right. So just take my paintbrush and dip it in, and I am going to paint. surface of my spoon and just you know make a nice edge there at the bottom because wherever the mod podge is your tissue paper is going to stick kind of like when you do um, napkin on paper and then I just kind of laid her on there where I wanted her. See that? And then you just kind of put it over a little bit, push her down. That might wrinkle a little bit. That's okay. I think it gives it some character. And then once I've pushed it down, went ahead and took my Mod Podge again and went over top for the image. And made sure I went around the edge of the spoon too. And make sure you brush out any bubbles. Alright, so there's that. Simple. Now you just have to set her aside and dry. And that usually takes about 15 minutes or so. It doesn't take too long with Mod Podge. Um, make sure you wash out your brush, soap, and water. But I'll get to that here at later. So, set it aside to dry, and while it's drying, we're going to do the other fun little things. Now, for the back, here I used a doily, and I just used a Martha Stewart doily I got at Michael's. Alright, so that's one part of the sandwich. You'd call it a sandwich. And of course, you can't get just one. And I like these Martha Stewart ones because they're thick. I don't know if you've noticed, I'm new at this at the store. Okay, so there's my back piece. Now I made a rosette out of crepe paper to go on top of that. And how I make my crepe paper rosettes is I take good old thread and a needle. I don't want to get it in my spoon here. And I gather one edge. It just seems to be easier. So I take my thread, I double it, I put a knot in the end. Alright. And then I start by bending over the the end, that's the cut end, and so that I have a nice finished edge, even though you don't see it because it's underneath the spoon, but you have a nice finished edge on your rosette. Because, you know, just in case someone should pick it apart for some reason, you know, it will look really nice. So, and then all I do, do is run a gathering stitch. I don't know if you can see that. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, the widths don't have to be the same width apart you're just gathering okay just like so and just down so far from the edge 
so it looks like that. And then when you think you have enough, you just kind of gather up both ends of your thread, the thread with the knot and the other end. Just kind of gather it up and see if it's going to be full enough or if you need to do more stitches. So, and I think we're good. So what I'm going to do then is, I can find my, is go ahead and tie it. My crepe paper doesn't want to cooperate. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tie it. you're on camera and you know things are gonna go wonky all right so I'm just gonna pull it up and tie it tight see like so and then just go ahead and knot it all right and then I'm gonna cut figure out where I need to cut. First of all, I need to cut my string at all. Okay. And then figure out where I need to cut my crepe paper. Like so. Alright. Now I've got my folded edge here and my other edge here. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue down my oh, rosette. I forgot what I was making here. My rosette on I I, I cut an oval piece, and uh, the reason I did was because my spoon was oval, and but you could use a round piece. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, so I'm going to put some glue on here, and I'm using my hot glue because, as you all should know me by now, I'm impatient. You're going, but that meets up funny down there. Look. Just trim it. Just trim it. See? Nobody will know. Nobody will know. Except I got the glue stuff. Okay. So there you go. So there's my crepe paper rosette. That's how I make mine. So, I don't know. I probably would have gathered a little more on that one. But it's okay. So that will go on top of my doily. My paper doily. And then you can see here I made a paper rosette. So, to make a paper rosette, I cut my piece one and a quarter inches wide by 12 inches, and I have one here already done and scored, but it is one and a quarter inches by 12 inches long. I know it doesn't look it. And this is also one and a quarter inches, and it's by six inches long. And then you score every quarter of an inch. So... I've already done that, but we'll pretend. So, we score every quarter of an inch all the way down. Alright? And then you're going to accordion fold. I know you guys know how to make rosettes. Now, I, can't, I flip mine over and fold because, you know, it's easy, but I still... I still sometimes have some difficulties doing the folding part. Okay, so there we go. Alright, so I have my 6 inch piece and I have my 12 inch piece. And we're going to glue them together to make an 18 inch long piece. So I pull my end out just a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on that edge. All right. 
and then I'm just going to glue it down into there, just so it hits the fold. And then there I've got a folded piece. Alright. Oops. Alright. Now, we need to connect this end. So we're going to do the same thing. Oh, I look like I do not know what I'm doing. Alright, so glue. And I'm going to put it over so it matches in that fold and along the edges there. I'm just going to crease it. Good. Alright, so now we have our gathered circle. So what I've done is I have cut two one inch circles out of cardstock because I need two circles to hold my rosette. I'm not talented enough to use just one circle. So I used two. But what you do is you just kind of push it down and then push it together like so as close as you can as close as you can and try and hold it and then try not to hot glue your fingers and you're going to put a disc in the center and you're going to squeeze it all in center it, push it down, hold it, all that good stuff until it sets. Okay. And it sets pretty quickly because I use hot glue. Alright. Now as you can see it kind of pops up a little bit. So I go around to the back side. Or you could do the back side first and then do the front. Doesn't really matter. Whatever you feel most comfortable with. And I'm going to put a back piece on and push it down and hold it. And it'll make it pretty darn flat. There, a pretty rosette. So that one goes on top of there, like so. And then, as you can see here, my spoon sticks up. So, I didn't want my white circle to show, so I glued just a scalloped circle there. But you could do a circle and put lace around it, however you make your wands, however you want to do it. You could cut out different shaped circle dies and layer it and so on. Um, use that um, eyelash yarn. That's really cool to use on wands also. So, I would glue this all together. Alright, now this is going to be my bottom because this is where my crepe pa paper rosette, <laughs> I have glue everywhere, comes together. So, this is where I'm going to put the handle of my spoon. So, this is going to be down. So, it'll be, all be glued together and I'm going to flip it over. And I made a bigger scallop with my Created with Love on it to go on the center in the back. Just kind of give it a little bit more support. Alright. And then, like so. Okay. You see that? So once my Mod Podge on the spoon was dry, which it isn't yet. All I did was just tear it with my finger because it's tissue paper. I mean, come on, people. So I just tore it. I don't know if I can do it because it's not dry. Yeah, I just tore it along the edge with my finger nail, like so. Oh, I forgot like the most important part. 
while she's still wet. I forgot the glitter. Oh my gosh. Gotta have glitter. It wouldn't be a craft without glitter and bling. All you need is a tiny little bit. And this is iridescent art glitter. I think. Let me look. Barbara Trombley's Art Glitter. Ultra fine, transparent. I don't know where I got it. Sorry. But it's a very light, shiny little finish there. Which is really, really kind of sweet. And I, I put it on the end of a spoon because I didn't want to get it all over my fingers. And wear it. Everywhere. So... Again, like I said, I just tore it along the edge, and then I just cleaned up the edge. It's kind of, once it's dry, it's easier to tear. It's a little rough right there. But you can just tear it off. And then I tied a tool bow around the bottom, or the, the bottom edge of the spoon, I guess. The, yeah, the bottom of the handle. And I used two different pieces. I used a blue piece and a pink piece and tied them together. I thought that was cute. And then I just glued it up at the top. But before I glued it, I took my good old string of pearls here and glued them around the edge, outside edge of the spoon just to give it a finished little look there. And I also put a string of pearls down the handle and then added some bling. Gotta bling it up, right? And that's it. So you could just tie regular ribbon around it. You could add flowers. You could, you, there's just so many possibilities. It's endless on what you could do. And like I said, I just put a big blob of glue on the back of my spoon and I used um I used a clear glue I didn't use my glue gun because I wanted to make sure that it stuck so I used like E6000 um, to glue my spoon to the rosettes and it takes a while for it to dry so you just kind of do it and then set it aside and and there you go so i hope you like my little project there it was kind of fun to try and think outside the box and come up with something using an old recyclable item and you know thrift stores are a great place to find craft supplies and things like spoons that you could decorate and I'm now wanting to do this technique of the tissue paper and the stamping and put it on other metal things because I think that just looks so cool. So I hope you give it a try. And thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. Hi, Mom. Hi, Rena. Hi, Dara. And everybody, keep crafting. Bye.